Tonight, here's the question. What do you do? Earlier this month, an Almonte boy was charged with two felonies for allegedly starting the Morris Dam fire that burned more than 2,100 acres. Now, detectives say a 16-year-old may have started up to a dozen fires in the Inland Empire. Included in that group, the Oak Glen and Pendleton Blazes. San Bernardino County District Attorney Mike Ramos says it's a very serious case and that they're considering trying the boy as an adult. Our contributor tonight, editor of WitnessLA.com, Celeste Freeman. Hi, Fred. And veteran television assignment editor, David Reese. David, I'm going to start with you. If charged, should they try him as an adult? Absolutely, because this is not child's play. This kid's 16 years old, and I know Celeste is going to have kittens about this, but the reality is this guy is 16 years old, and it's not just an isolated incident. We now believe that this kid may have been responsible for starting even more fires, many of them. And so my question is, what does it take to charge you as an adult if you do an adult crime? I mean, I, I believe that children can be stupid, but this is a 16-year-old. He's old enough to drive, and he's old enough to start possibly more than one fire. You know, what is it going to take for him to burn down someone's house or kill a firefighter before we take this crime seriously? Throw the book at him. He should be tried as an adult. Celeste? I, you know, I want to know where the adults were. Uh, this kid is supposedly uh, now being, they suspect he started 12 to 14 fires right. since two, 2006, which meant he was 13 when he started um, starting uh, started fighting uh, fires. Where were the grown-ups? All right, Why well, is this the first time that now something is happening? No, I don't think he should be tried as an adult. All we know about when you put kids into the adult system, they're mo more likely to come out and uh, go right back in. They're more likely to commit a serious crime than if they were uh, kept in the juvenile system. Celeste, we, I get that. Celeste, let me jump in. Celeste, Celeste, David, in. Celeste, David, let me jump in. Celeste, I hear what you're saying. Nonetheless, this guy did some pretty bad stuff. This guy caused yeah. a lot of damage. And you're telling me, what do we do? Say, Johnny, don't like, don't like matches no, anymore? No, no. What do we do? He's 25. Well, right, he's in if we, send him into the ju if we send him into the adult system, he's more likely to come out and commit more crimes. If we send him into the he's juvenile system, is he going to be public, uh, punished enough to prevent him from doing crime again? And that's the whole issue here. You know, I We, mean, need, we I, need to be able to step in and change this kid. And again, why this, this is something why I would love some journalists to look into this kid's because that past of tw setting 12 to 14 fires since he was 13 years old has to be explored because there was a huge failure by all the adults around him. And now we have a kid who set a big fire that could have really hurt somebody. More protests on college campuses today, the UC system schools. Teachers are upset. Students are upset. Everybody that works there is upset. Students are upset because tuition will go up. Everybody else is upset because in order to balance the budget, 100,000 full-time UC employees took a 4 to 10 percent pay cut plus mandatory furloughs. You can understand nobody is happy. Celeste, you teach in the UC system. With the budget uh problems the way they are, what's supposed to happen here? Uh, you know, uh, those of us who teach in the system, I teach at, uh, a workshop at UC Irvine. Fortunately, my first class is tomorrow, so I wasn't put in the position of having to solve this dilemma of do I walk out um, and support this strike? Or do, uh, but if I walk out, then I have taken a tenth of the instruction time away from my students because it's a 10-week quarter. And so I'm making things for kids who already are missing classes or already getting big jumps in, in fees. I'm making it worse. So this was a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. Um, and, uh, and yet there's a lot to protest. Uh, uh, what One of the things that, uh, that uh, faculty and students are furious about is the fact that there was a huge bunch of raises handed out this summer to some of the top ex executives, while the people at the bottom of the totem pole, I mean, the, the staff that's making less than $40,000 a year, had uh, um, uh, 9 to 14 percent pay cuts. Are those and, folks and so, at the top of the food chain? Well, are those Frank, folks? Wait, let me ask this, David, real quick. Are those folks, Celeste, at the top that got the raises, do they have to give back or do they keep the raises, to your knowledge? No, they keep them. They're, they're keeping them. No one, no one has any intention. I mean, it's, it's starting to look like Wall Street. Go ahead, David. Okay, well, I, mean, I think it is ridiculous, the point that Celeste makes about these raises. And the question is, where is the money being spent? But does anybody else see the irony here that it's the first day of school, these kids are ostensibly protesting the, the fact that these um, cuts to education are going to make education harder to access. Why aren't they in class? This is the first day of school. You know, I just find it 
I, I just find this is a really inappropriate way to protest something that I think we can all agree is unfortunate. Nobody likes cuts. I don't want to see Celeste take a pay cut. I don't want to see it harder for any kids to go to school. I think that's a very important thing for, for all of us to go through higher education. It sets the foundation for the rest of your life. But protesting these uh, cuts by not attending class on the first day of school, that's just the wrong-headed way to, to go about this. You know, I'm glad I didn't have to make the choice because I would have come to school and asked my students what they wanted to do and tried to make it a teachable moment. But, uh, you know, some kind of protest is called for. But I agree with you. I don't, I don't think this was the right one. All right, let's move on now to our next topic. The one place you expect everything to go perfectly, of course, is the hospital. Here's why. Mistakes are, of course... A matter of life and death. Oh, yeah. Today, 11 Southland hospitals were fined for state health violations. What kind of infractions? Coast Plaza Doctors Hospital in Norwalk, L.A. County, USC, Loma Linda University Medical Center, and Sharp Chula Vista Medical Center, to name a few, all left instruments or sponges inside of patients following surgery. David, these kinds of mistakes happen more than anyone would like, but what happens if there was universal health care and everything was free? Is that going to make it better or worse? <laughs> Well, I don't think it's going to have any impact, Fred, because the reality is it's going to be the same situation then as we have now, which is, is as a patient, you've really got to do your homework about this. There are good doctors and there are bad doctors. And if we have universal health care, there will still be good and bad doctors and good and bad hospitals. You know, some of the best hospitals that we, what we typically think of as the best hospitals have had some pretty egregious errors. Cedars Sinai gave blood thinners to twins. You know, I mean, this right. kind of stuff happens more than we want to acknowledge. I really don't think this is an issue about universal health care. This is an issue about good doctors and bad doctors and good hospitals and bad hospitals. Celeste? I, I, I'm completely with David. Some of these, these mistakes are so appalling. Uh, at USC, um, the, a guy with a broken leg, uh, they got charts switched, so they told him he, ha he had cancer in his leg, and they amputated his leg. In another situation uh, with a guy with a gunshot wound, they, le they left three sponges and two towels in the guy and then closed him up. It boggles the mind. I, I wrote a lot about Martin Luther King uh, Hospital before it, it shut down and some of the terrible things that were going on there. But the truth is, I mean, a lot of these things are just as bad. So so how do we, without over-regulating, how do we address some of this stuff? And uh, it, it is one of the reasons why we don't want to completely take away any kind of... Uh, uh, want to over for that these doctors can't be sued because they, there needs to be some kind of consequence. All right, we're going to move on now. And uh, if you would, I want you to take a look at something. Now, this is a PSA for breast cancer awareness. It's certainly a different approach, and after you see it, you'll understand why some people are not only upset, but offended. Here we go. Well, that spot is from a nonprofit group in Canada. Celeste, are you offended, or did the PSA get its point across? I love it. I thought it was great. I mean, I'm a, you know, I, I grew up in the feminist era, and I thought it was terrific. 40,000 women a year in America die of breast cancer. I thought this was funny and fun. And as a matter of fact, there is a, uh, another PSA that's going around that's put out by the Susan B. Komen uh, Foundation. It's not quite as racy. But where women, it's called a pledge, they, they you know, put their hands over their, you know, heart-ish. And they say, I pledge allegiance to my tatas, to my gangas. And, you know, again, it's, it's using humor. Pay attention. This is a big deal to die from this. You know, I'd love to see that uh, PSA done in America and with a, a bunch of different women with a bunch of Body and who and who wow. exactly, Fred, is offended by this? I mean, yeah. if you are really offended by this, you need to go give up your television and go live with the Amish. I well, mean, yeah. I welcome to the 21st century. I and mean, come on. Well, you, you didn't think it, you didn't you didn't really think, seriously, but you didn't think it was a little much, and you don't think it's a little much for the American yeah. audience running at eight o'clock at night on a network. Uh, well, you know, what during 60 minutes. But uh, do I think it's too much for network television? No. I mean, look at Melrose Place. I mean, that's softcore porn. We use uh, sex to sell everything in this country, and then every so often we get prudish about things. And, uh, yeah, probably not along with after-school specials. 
But uh, I thought it was terrific, and I think uh, if, if people are upset by it, they need a priority transplant, honestly. All right, Celeste, David, well done tonight. Really appreciate it. We'll talk to you guys next week.